Hello everyone, it's Judy here at Janet's Floral and we are ready for day two of our spring migration madness. And today we're gonna to talk about Orioles. And we actually have already had a couple questions today about Orioles and when to put the Oriole feeders out. And unlike the hummingbird feeders, which I think you could probably put out now, I think putting the Oriole feeders out isn't necessary quite yet. Um, give it a couple more weeks. Um, it might be that you hear them and you're like, oh, I better get that out. I have one customer in Crestline. She always hears them. And last year they came sooner than she would have anticipated. So just you can kind of keep your ear peeled for them if you know what they sound like. Or you can wait till probably the 20th, 25th of April and then get those out. They typically, Orioles typically return um, later in the month of April and then beginning of May. And just like I said yesterday with the hummingbirds, the Orioles that will come through first will be ones that are migrating. So they'll come, they'll stop, they'll eat, and then they'll move on through, just like the hummingbirds. It's the little bit later ones that will be the ones that will stay in your yard. So as it's important for you to get them out for those early migrators, but then also for the ones that will be staying in our area. And as they see your feeder, that will help them to maybe take up residence within your yard. And you might say, well, I threw put out a feeder and I didn't get them. Well, it could be it wasn't out soon enough. It could be that maybe your yard doesn't have any trees. And that's really important for Orioles. Whereas hummingbirds don't really care about trees, they care more about flowers. Orioles care more about trees. And so they nest in um, higher or taller trees. And so if you don't have very many tall trees in your yard, it might be hard for you to get them. Or maybe a neighbor has a tall tree, so that would be fine. But if you don't have many of those in your area, um, it'll lessen the likelihood that you might attract an Oriole to your yard. So what can you do to help? So one of the, there's three things that they really like, oranges. So I have a feeder here that's in the shape of an orange. <laughs> um, this is actually a nectar feeder, but they like oranges. They also like grape jelly. And so we have some grape jelly here. It, this actually has blackberry in it too, and is actually quite delicious. I um, enjoyed eating that last year. And then the other thing they really like is nectar. And so we have some nectar here. And I have feeders that will just feed one of those things or they'll feed all three. So an example of something that would feed all three would be one like this. I'm gonna try to pull that down. There we go. This is the ultimate Oreo feeder. And you put orange halves on the things that are sticking out here. You put jelly in the little compartments and then the nectar goes on the inside. And if you've had Orioles coming um, in past years, this might be a great either upgrade or, or a new feeder to add to your collection. Um, the one thing as I'm looking at this, I'm seeing the hole. You can see the hole size in that feeder. And if you compare that to the whole size in this hummingbird feeder, you can see that the openings are significantly different in size. So often I'll hear a customer say, well, they come to my hummingbird feeder and when they're passing through, um, they'll often do that. They'll stop at a hummingbird feeder and they might get a little bit, but they'll get frustrated with that smaller hole and they'll move on either to another home where they've found an Oreo feeder or they'll just move on farther north. But they'll move on because that isn't giving them enough. And so you need, if you're feeding nectar, you need a feeder that has a hole big enough for them to get their beak in. So this feeds all three. This is a smaller version that also feeds all three. Um, jelly, the nectar goes uh, inside the feeder. And then you unscrew this and you would put the hanger, the hook, through the orange and then screw that back on. This feeder, as well as the other one that I showed you, in the very center are ant moats. And so you can fill that inner space with water and then the, the ant will come down the hook and hit the water and not be able to get to the nectar. But those 
holes are pretty little. <laughs> so in a heat of the summer, those are going to, um, the water will evaporate pretty quickly. So using an ant moat like this, a little bit bigger, uh, can be more helpful. And again, this can act as a watering um, place for the Orioles or even other birds will eat from this. Um, this also can be used for jelly. And I've never really had anybody do that, but the birds would eat jelly right out of here. So you could hang one from, if you're not having an ant issue, you could certainly just put jelly right in here and it would work. Uh, this is another type of jelly feeder and the jelly goes right in here and you hang it and it sit, the Oriole sits here and just, you know, gets the jelly right out of there. I do have another type of feeder and I don't have it in stock. Hopefully it'll be here next week. It's a little yellow or a little orange flower feeder and you put jelly in it and then there's two prongs for the oranges and that's a really great feeder to use and actually the one that I use. And I sold the last one just a little while ago. So, but again, we'll have more next week. Um, so those are the types of feeders. You can do solid nectar um, with a feeder like this or with the orange one that I showed you. But one of the things that people say is that nectar is what tends to draw an Oriole to your yard and grape jelly is what tends to keep them. And so I think it's important to incorporate both nectar and jelly if you can, and even to add in the oranges. I didn't have the best success with oranges, and I know other people say that, but then I have others who say, oh, I put those orange halves out and they were all over them and ate, you know, those oranges right up. So, you know, try all three, see what works for you. Um, just like all of us, we have different taste buds and things that appeal to us and birds are no different. So remember the three kinds of food, nectar, jelly, and oranges. And, and I, a fourth thing would actually be mealworms. They like mealworms too, just like the bluebirds. And then habitat. You, if you have trees in your yard, you'll have much more success. Kind of the opposite of the bluebirds where they need open spaces, um, orioles, don't mind open space, but they also need the trees to nest in. So hopefully that answered some of your questions. And again, you'll put those feeders out towards the end of the month. I wanted to make you aware of a class. Jason came and spoke on the bluebirds and he will be here on the 22nd to talk about Orioles and hummingbirds. And so that is April 22nd at six. And there is an event in our Facebook page that you can tell us if you'd like to come or you can call into the store. And our number uh, here is 419-529-9739. So before we close our daily dive, I want to take a little trip outside because I think you should see how things have transformed. So we're going to go out there and So today we got in another shipment of plants and you can see all the really nice perennials over there. And then and Mackenzie, if you walk a little farther, look at the nice array of hanging baskets that just came. And we've actually already sold some of those. And I know it may seem a little early and in many ways it is, but a hanging basket with the week we're having, you could certainly put that out, enjoy it and um, bring it back in next week if it gets too cold. So just kind of wanted you to see some of what's going on. Again, I'll be in Michigan tomorrow and hopefully be able to show you a little bit about what's going on there and be back here on Thursday from nine to five. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you then. Bye.